Welcome to The Art of Medicine, the program that explores the arts, business, and clinical aspects of the practice of medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Andrew Wilner. It's coming up on tax time, and today it's back to the nitty-gritty space of the business of medicine. I'm very pleased to have Bill Martin on the show. Bill is the chief wealth officer. I like that title. Somewhere, <laughs> someday, I want to be the chief wealth officer. And he's at a company called earnedwealth.com. His expertise is helping physicians manage their investments and optimize their net worth. I think something we all want to do, everybody should have somebody like Bill Martin helping them. And uh, he's going to tell us what he does. And, you know, I don't have a wealth manager. I'll just come up front with that. And I've never thought of myself as wealthy. And I don't know if I need one. And so this interview is a little bit for me, too. I want to find out if Bill's got something that that I need. And uh, maybe some of you are in that same situation. But before we get started, I'd like to thank our sponsor, locumstory.com. Maybe you're curious about locums and how it might fit into your career story. But do you know all the different reasons physicians choose locums and how it works for them? At locumstory.com, you can hear firsthand stories as diverse as physicians themselves. There's not one solution for everyone. The variety of opportunities might surprise you. Locum Story is an unbiased educational resource. It has tools that let you explore trends in your specialty and compare different locums agencies. There's even a simple quiz to see if locums is right for you. Do your own research at locumstory.com. It's easy. And one more thing. Thanks for joining us. The Art of Medicine podcast is available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Alexa will find it for you, too. And now to my guest. Welcome, Bill. Thank you, Andrew. Pleasure to be a guest on this podcast. So wealth management sounds like a good thing. Why... I want to know your background and why I should trust you with whatever wealth it is that I might have. As you said in the intro, I am the chief wealth officer and a member of the founding team of Earned. We are a comprehensive wealth management practice that is built exclusively for physicians. And for me, um, helping physicians to achieve financial wellness is rewarding. Um, I know a number of physicians just personally and as friends, and I think of the work that they do as being among the most noble of professions. And yet physicians face enormous career and financial challenges. So for me, prior to earned, I've had a variety of experiences. I work for a multinational financial technology company, consulting with some of the nation's largest wealth management practices. I saw what was working, and I often, often saw what wasn't. Um, had a chance to be a part of a, a founding team of a wealth tech startup that we ended up selling to a publicly traded company. From there, I went to uh, become the chief investment officer of a regional based bank. And in that capacity, worked with a number of physicians. And then I had the opportunity when our CEO, John Clendenning, John is the former CEO of Charles Schwab Bank. He reached out to me and a number of others with a distinct set of experiences and asked if we would be interested in joining Earned, and here I am today. Um, just a little bit more, I have a CFA, um, so a Chartered Financial Analyst designation, I have an MBA, I've authored um, the Smart Financial Advisor, and serve on a number of industry advisory boards. Ah, so a book, The Smart Financial Advisor, is that on Amazon? Yeah, it's out on Amazon, and it was um, originally written for other advisors in this profession, and Really, my my view was uh, there's a lot of call it upgrading that we need to do as an industry. I think it's some of the skepticism actually that physicians have across um, the financial advisory landscape. And the goal of that book was just to say this is the standard we need to be operating at um, as we work with the clients and they've entrusted us with their hard earned wealth. All right. So clarify for me, wealth management. Does that mean? you're investing for me? Because I know there are companies, they say, oh, you've got a half million dollars here. Give it to us and we'll make it grow for you. Is, is that, and it's like, well, I don't know. I think I'll just put it in the bank. But is that something that you do? 
Let me start, Andrew, by saying wealth management has many different meanings. And it's confusing, I think, for the general public to understand what exactly a wealth manager does. One key place, I think, to start is to distinguish between is a wealth manager categorized as a fiduciary or are they more operating under a broker standard? And what's interesting is, again, it's, it's hard to discern for the average investing public the difference between the two, but the implications are huge. And for example, as a fiduciary, which that's how we've been organized as a registered investment advisory firm, um, we are legally bound to do the best interest of our clients. Um, it's just the way in which we operate, we're fee-based, um, and there's a number of really good fiduciary-based practices. And so I would encourage um, physicians, whether you have a wealth manager or exploring that option, to just ask that question, are, are you a fiduciary? The second thing is um, brokers. So to kind of contrast that, they still have a standard. It's a lower suitability standard, meaning you just have to make at the point of a sale, was that recommendation reasonable and suitable? It's often commission-based. And so it's a very different um, way of operating. And so when you hear wealth management, wealth management, it could imply both. I would encourage fiduciary wealth management is the right way to go for physicians. But even among um, fiduciaries, there's a variety of different ways that wealth management services are delivered. And as you suggested, one of is just managing the underlying investments, something we do, and I would say it's what most, um, I think there was a survey by Fidelity that was released earlier this year. 99% of wealth managers are providing some sort of investment management service. So that's the core and foundational part. In addition, kind of what are some additional services that um, are often layered in? And I would say financial planning. So taking a look at where you're at, where you want to go, what are the key goals and how to best get there. And a number of fiduciary based practices are going to include financial planning in the services along with investment management. But then um, there's a whole other set of um, services that could be delivered. Things like um, insurance planning, tax planning, um, estate planning. All these services are things that we provide and do it in an integrated way. Um, and it's an important thing, I think, otherwise what's often um, is the reality is the physician is left to coordinate all these different distinct, call it financial, services among a web of providers with a uh, career that is very, very demanding, and it becomes um, overwhelming at times. And so for us, it was really important to take a, a coordinated and comprehensive approach. Hardly any um, would then go to this area that I'm going to talk about. would like to share more on this, um, the talk that we're having, Andrew, is around this concept of career advisory. You mentioned uh, locum tenens. And there is so many different options for physicians to earn income, to maximize that, and to do it um, really unlocking the full potential of their career. It's something that is at the heart of what we do and it kind of encompasses and informs all those different areas of the wealth management spectrum that I mentioned. Lastly, um, the term financial advisor under, call it a wealth management umbrella, what does that often mean? Um, well, there's not a given standard that everybody has to meet in order to be considered a financial advisor. For, for us, it's really important that we <clears throat> hire engage advisors that have a CFP designation. So um, certified financial planner, it's a, it's a process that goes through a lot of different areas of wealth management. They've had to go through this. There's an industry um, term of experiences before it could be granted and used. So I would encourage, um, the physicians that are looking at wealth management services, what's the credentials of the advisor that's providing those services? For me, I have the CFA, Charter Financial um, Analyst designation. It's more of an investment focus piece. Um, so I think that's another, call it gold standard designation that's out there, but start with that CFP. I think it's a really good place if you're engaging an advisor that hopefully they have that professional designation to help you along your, with your wealth journey. Okay. That thank you. That was that was a great explanation. So I, I want to get some specifics. I mean, you've got a guy he's going to work every day. I don't know, say he's working for Kaiser, he's making two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, he's got some uh, retirement thrown in. I mean, 
then he's got bills to pay. He's got a mortgage on his house and he spends about, you know, $249,000 a year. And he's got a dollar left at the end of the year. I mean, what, where do you come in? I mean, where, how does he manage this? I mean, he's earning and he's spending. What are the big decisions he needs to make where you guys would help? Yeah, what you just outlined there is probably not all that uncommon. Uh, you know, a salary that you mentioned, a, a nice wage, but it's not a wage that's necessarily going to turn somebody into um, a, a multi-millionaire millionaire overnight. Um, and definitely, if $249,900 of that income is spent, um, they're going to have a nice income, but they're not going to be wealthy. So a core part of what we would do is to help um, a physician understand, again, very clearly where they are at today. So you build a financial plan that includes, here's your net worth, here's um, an understanding of dollars coming in and dollars going out, including things like, how do you minimize tax liability? How do you maximize things like the retirement savings and matches? And then begin to look at, well, where is it that you want to go? What are those financial goals? And it's different for everyone. Maybe it's to potentially retire a bit early. Maybe it's to take on more of a part-time type of opportunity. Perhaps it's taking on more and doing some things like locum tenens work in addition to W-2. And so what we do then is help them understand the implications of those decisions and then how to maximize the strategies to potentially get to where you're going. It's much more than the management of the assets. That's just kind of a byproduct of what is potentially done. But think of it as developing your own personal blueprint, a way to get, again, where you want to go. There's some stats I'll likely share a little bit later on. Um, but to me, that is the heart of what um, a really good financial advisor, financial planner is going to do for somebody in the situation that you just described. Is there a cutoff uh, income? cut off, for example, where you could say, well, you make $200,000 a year. You don't have enough extra money to need a wealth manager. You make, you know, more than five, no problem. Uh, for example, there's, there's an accounting service. Uh, I won't mention the name because I can't remember it, but they specialize in high earners. So if you don't mm -hmm. earn a certain number, they don't want to bother with you because they, there's not enough money floating around, I guess, for any big decisions. You know, one way or the other, you just, you know, you got to pay these taxes and these are your expenses. And, you know, uh, the H&R uh, Block computer could do it. And their sort of extra services really won't come into play until there's a little extra cash. Uh, now, for wealth management, I, I, it's a long winded way of asking who, which position should consider wealth management. Yes, if you take the definition, Andrew, that wealth management is just the management of the assets, and that historically has been what the industry has been. It's often those that have um, earned and have saved a substantial nest egg to be able to manage. And so in those cases, it's maybe not even so much the income, it's what's been the accumulated wealth through the, the savings over a period of years, which tends to end up being mid or to later stage physicians that have amassed enough to do that. We've wanted to take a different approach. And I think as the industry is changing and trying to figure out how can we serve more, I, maybe a way of describing it is it's like the democratization of wealth services for, for the masses or for us, for physicians of all different stages. And um, one of the areas is thinking of, of physicians that are in training. Um, again, income is incredibly low, but the set of circumstances that are behind there, extended training period, Often, those that are in training, their other peers that are outside of medicine, maybe they went on to grad school, got an MBA, they're out now working for, um, you know, name whatever, tech company, a bank, bank or et cetera, and already kind of well underway and often don't have the same levels of debt. So from my perspective, if you take the broader view of wealth management, of really understanding things like how do you develop a plan? How do you make sure the risk the risk that you face, so risk management insurance and others are appropriate, appropriately aligned? How are you making uh, the full advantage of employment, um, em employment retirement plans, et cetera? Those are decisions to have a financial partner to help you along that actually will give you a much better chance 
of unlocking, call it the true wealth potential, I think that physicians um, have the opportunity to achieve. One quick stat, um, we, in some of the research and before starting the company, we found that even though physicians are among the top 5% of earners across the U.S., um, one out of four physicians when they reach retirement are retiring with less than a million dollars. And to me, if you, and then one other kind of kind of add on, the average um, wealth that's accumulated for physicians across all specialties is about $3.4 million. Sounds like a nice nest egg, but for us kind of doing the math and starting early and making really smart decisions all along the way, that number we think should easily be double. And in fact, when we're starting to develop financial plans and look at the current trajectory, regardless of kind of stage, we often see more than a doubling of net worth opportunity. Now, it's not all just about the dollars. I think it's an important consideration because we all have different priorities and goals. Maybe it's to have the ability to have financial freedom, financial independence, to make some choices that don't feel like you're just locked into this grind 24-7. And that's part of the work that can be done, too. So as you take this more expansive view of what wealth management is, and the way in which we as a firm are trying to apply this, it's important to do this across all aspects of a career stage or all components of whether it's family medicine to plastic surgery. There's opportunities to be able to really fully achieve that full wealth potential that physicians can and do deserve. Yeah, I think, you know, most physicians still go into medicine because uh, it's a calling and it's a passion and medicine requires a lot of studying. I still spend a lot of time <laughs> studying, even though uh, a lot of gray hair, it's just part of the day. And that doesn't leave a lot of time for learning how the about the financial markets, you know, and reading between the lines, you know, when you read this company made this announcement about something, is this a good investment? And, uh, you know, I, I think there's just like in our business, there's a lot of subtleties when you read mm -hmm. a, a document or a report that aren't obvious to someone who isn't trained. And I suspect, uh, I don't know if you read the headlines about these uh, <laughs> cryptocurrency guys <laughs> lately, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors back there that uh, may not be uh, obvious or advantageous to just, you know, little old me that, you know, got $100 to invest in. Is that a good idea? Uh, quick question. Do you have accountants on your staff? In other words, do you do everything? I just say, OK, here's my money. Invest it. Give me something to sign at the end of the year and everything's done. Or do you just say you create some sort of package that we then give to some outside person or is an accountant part of your orbit? Yeah. And in, in our current state, um, we do not have a CPA, CPA on staff, although we're actively recruiting and see the importance of bringing that on. So I suspect in 2024, the answer will be different than like um, later in 2024, the answer will likely be different. Um, but for right now, we do have the capability of what I call tax planning. And to me, that's in a very important part, too. So the compliance part, filing um, your taxes, doing so to make sure you follow the re regulatory re uh, requirements is, is something that often a CPA will do. And it's something that we all have to do <laughs> um, is to file those taxes in a compliant way. Um, I would say unlocking the value um, of tax planning is, something, is an activity that is ongoing throughout the year. And so, for example, um, you know, going back to, to locum tenants, what are the opportunities to take full advantage of the tax strategies of having, call it 1099 independent contractor income? Um, so that's the type of work that we would look at. Do that in partnership with, let's say, the CPA and um, find ways to, to really maximize the full value. There's things like backdoor of Ross. Or later on, even um, in somebody's in retirement, doing things like Roth conversions. Does that make sense? Those are the sorts of what I'd say integration of tax decisions, how those ultimately get implemented are important. But we do want to uh, be in a place in a relatively not too distant future to have all of that in-house. Meanwhile, in addition to working with a physician's existing CPA, something we do every day, and do it in a very coordinated, collaborative way, 
Um, for those that don't have a CPA um, that specializes in working with physicians, we do have an existing partnership with somebody that does great work there that we introduced, have discounted rates, work in this coordinated way already. So if that's of interest to anybody that's listening in, we could certainly make that introduction as well. Okay, so they're a separate company, but they are. you're on a first name basis. We are. So, because uh, I think, you know, certainly in medicine, communication between specialists is often fractured. You know, they're in a different system, a different hospital, records don't always uh, merge. And, you know, sometimes these things are complicated, you know, to how it's like, where did that number come from? That's what I always ask my accountant. Where did yeah. that number come from? I didn't give you that number. <laughs> yeah. That number, you gave me that number. And, you it, know, it's Andrew. Just, yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, thinking of that, here's a, just a quick example, put a little more meat on, on this topic. So um, take an existing CPA or this individual, this firm that I was talking about, we have a partnership with. Maybe that individual is doing some locum tenens work and they decide setting up a solo 401k would be a great opportunity for both tax savings and the ability to um, set aside more for retirement. Well, that CPA can't do that in the same way. So we would work in partnership to be able to What's the appropriate way to set that up? How do we get that invested on behalf of that and doing that work in tandem? So it's not just the idea because often the idea gets floated and then that physician gets busy and never actually does it. So by doing that work in tandem, um, we can really add what we think is you know, meaningful value in that collaborative work with the, with the CPA professionals. What about physicians? I, I am bombarded in my email box about real estate opportunities. And I know some some physicians actually do have real estate investments. Um, is that something that would fall under your sort of uh, bailiwick there? Yes, um, we have a whole host of different investing strategies. And I would say at the the heart of what we try to do is to look at how do we maximize after tax wealth? I think one of the reasons that physicians evaluate real estate, a couple of things, it's a passive based income, depending on if you are actively involved in the management or a little bit done, done in a more passive way, there's different call it tax benefits that are associated with that. But I, I see that as one of the kind of intersections, again, between an investment strategy and tax. And it's certainly the way in which we um, approach working with physicians. We have, so, so here's a, um, a quick example, a physician may have an existing property for whatever reason they decide to sell it. There's a lot of capital gains associated with that, and they decide we'd love to reinvest this back into other real estate. That's where we can come in, often again in coordination, collaboration with the, with the CPA, of doing something that's referred to as a 1031 tax-free exchange. We can help facilitate that. We can make sure that those taxes, if done appropriately, are deferred and rolled into um, what's called a, a Delaware Statutory Trust, a vehicle that kind of diversifies across commercial real estate, captures that 1031 exchange benefit, and allows that physician to have um, institutional quality access to real estate. Um, and that's just one option and one kind of example of the type of way way that we work. Um, but yes, I, I, I would agree. I think physicians often like that tangible way of seeing their wealth. Um, and so having that as part of the overall portfolio and wealth management strategy, we, th we think is an important piece to many physicians. Now, one part of wealth uh, acquisition is uh, limiting uh, expenses, right? Mm -hmm. We all agree on that. <laughs> uh, so how much does it cost to hire you? How big a chunk of the wealth is that going to be? Well, let me first um, speak to how we've organized. So I, I mentioned we're a registered investment advisor, fiduciary, but we, it was really important for us to also stand up a physician advisory council. This council evaluates things like how we price and are we adding value back to the physicians. The council is about um, 12 individuals that are part of that, that span across different specialties, career stage, practice type, and it really helps inform the way that we deliver our services to physicians. Um, one of the things that was important for them is we kind of understood and how do we want to um, approach the market was to provide some options to physicians that can help build trust. So the entry point that we have into our services, and it's often an access point for those that are maybe still in training, in fact, is called our membership or membership offer 
It's actually complimentary. complimentary. We don't charge for that service. Um, what it is, is they get access to a financial app that is designed specifically for physicians. We have our own tech team that's built it, and it's a really great way to begin to organize your financial life. So you can put together, um, it helps kind of through some AI, develop a, a, an automated budget that can then be um, layered in with your own kind of view. On top of that, there's secure document fault. There's some financial planning tools that you can use yourself that give ideas. Should I pay down debt or should I use this next dollar to invest? Um, so it's a, we believe it's a, a great way to get started. And for us, it's kind of investing back into the profession. The second way is what we call a wealth diagnostic, and it's a flat fee engagement. We are engaged for about a three month time frame, and take a very deep dive into things from your tax situation, your estate plan, insurance, your investing assets, your retirement assets, and develop at the end of this that we replay as a financial plan. And that financial plan also lists out, here's key observations and opportunities that we see are missing. Often um, physicians that are either do it themselves want to kind of the second opinion or somebody that's a professional mm -hmm. overlooking and saying, Would, am I missing anything that's a part of this? And others often said, I've spent 10 or 15 years putting together my financial team. Um, I don't really know if they're doing a great job. And it's a good way to, again, have another um, way to look at this. The way we charge for it, it's $5,000. Um, it really is essentially our kind of covers our cost because we will do a really thorough deep dive into this. And part of the physician advisory council feedback to us was again, build trust and credibility. So if we didn't find any value, and if this was not of service, um, part of our commitment is we'll give that $5,000 back, no questions asked. Um, and what we've seen though, is this often is a, a really eye-opening experience. And because of call it the, the breadth of service and the physician specificity, we can find a lot of ways um, to add value. And the final um, way in which uh, physicians can engage with us is through an ongoing wealth management service. And that is an assets under management, approximately 1% of the assets that we manage. But that could also encompass advice on the entire balance sheet. Maybe there's held away real estate. We can help with the tax side. We can help develop and evaluate an estate plan and do this in a coordinated way in which at the end of the day, the principle behind our pricing all three of these is we want to deliver um, a multiple of value, not just cover our fee. And I'm not talking about investment returns, but tax savings and other things that are very tangible and evident, evidence based that the physician walks away and feels like this is um, this has been a great service and something that I'd be really excited to share with my friends. In fact, that's what we're seeing. We see great client satisfaction. We've taken client survey and um, we compensate our advisors based on client sat satisfaction. So all this is a principle kind of behind this is the creation of value and being able to evidence that for the physician so that they know the dollars invested in this are getting a great payback um, in working with us as a company. Well, I like the the tiered structure, mm -hmm. particularly the, the free option. <laughs> so if, if somebody wants to, to get a hold of that app, where, where do they go? Yeah, just go to, you know, the iStore or the Apple Store and um, download Earned Earned Wealth app. Um, and again, it's a great way just to begin in engaging with these tools and um, getting some insights. I, I would encourage like every listener to, to do this. I would also describe it, Andrew, kind of like um, Mint.com or Personal Capital, if some are familiar with those different tools. Um, similar to that, but then with this physician specificity overlay on top of it. Yeah, um, I like that. I like yeah. that. And I'll put that in the show notes so Great. Uh, people reading the, the transcript will, will see it. And I'm sure there's a way to find you through that app if people want to go to step two or step three. Yeah, the, the best way would, um, yes, through there or just go out to our website, which is earnedwealth.com. Um, and there you can take a take a tour around some of the services that we provide, see who's involved, like the team. Um, we have the listing of the Physician Advisory Council that's there. So it's a great way just to kind of check us out and see if there's an opportunity and there's ways then to either engage with me or engage with the rest of the team. And we'd love to have an opportunity to explore, you know, could we help you with your personal wealth journey? 
Yeah, I'll just mention, I should have mentioned this at the beginning, but that we connected through a uh, physician blogger who <laughs> writes about uh, finance and thought that uh, you'd be a good guest on the show. And I think he was right. So uh, we're going to wrap up. Is there anything you'd like to add before we close? Yeah, I just would say um, it's really never too early, in our opinion, never too late to begin engaging in these types of opportunities. And for us, it's not just about, can we make sure you are great stewards of this career and the wealth that's been accumulated, but there's so many different goals. Like um, I know the pressures that are part of being a physician. How can you achieve the financial independence that gives you that kind of flexibility? That's the sort of thing that really, I, I would just say, excites me about getting up in the morning and doing the work that we do. Um, physicians give so much and it's just our, I think duty of care that we want to give back in that same way. Um, so, you know, Andrew, it's been a delight to be on this this conversation, this uh, this podcast with you, and would love to have an opportunity if any guests were interested in the concepts that we talked about to engage in a conversation with us. Well, Bill Martin, thanks very much for joining me on the Art of Medicine. Thank you. Now, before we close, I'd like to give another thanks to our sponsor, locumstory.com, a resource where providers can get real, unbiased answers about locum tenants. I'm Dr. Andrew Wilner. See you next time. This program is hosted, edited, and produced by Andrew Wilner, MD, FACP, FAAN. Guests receive no financial compensation for their appearance on the art of medicine. Andrew Wilner, MD, is Associate Professor of Neurology at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center, Memphis, Tennessee. Views, thoughts, and opinions expressed on this program belong solely to Dr. Wilner and his guests and not necessarily to their employers, organizations, or other group or individual. While this program intends to be informative, it is meant for entertainment purposes only. The Art of Medicine does not offer professional financial, legal, or medical advice. Dr. Wilner and his guests assume no responsibility or liability for any damages, financial or otherwise, that arise in connection with consuming this program's content. Thanks for watching. For more episodes of The Art of Medicine, please subscribe. www.andrewwilner.com <laughs>